Hi, I'm Leslie Kale Villarreal and today I'd like to teach you how to make your own soldering clips using the new Concepts Titanium Strips. This instructor with a couple of tips about soldering your work and what to use so you don't get a heat sink. My students are always asking me about tripods and uh, other things that you can use to, or, or a little nest of binding wire to kind of get your uh, piece on your block and get some heat underneath it. So uh, some of the things that I really like to use are the New Concepts Titanium Clips. Uh, they're amazing and as far as like a heat sink, you're not going to really get one with these. Titanium is is really great and it kind of helps where you might have a third arm or a third hand set of tweezers that looks like this and if you use that on your piece, you know, that eventually it and you have to heat right there. You have to really understand about where your flame's going and where you're feeding the heat to because if you feed it to this part and it gets too hot, you're gonna have a melted piece of silver. So um, it's one of the reasons I don't like these too much, but I do use a third arm on occasion, uh, third hand, whatever you prefer to call them. And uh, well, one of the things that I really love to use though are these little um, titanium strips from New Concepts. Now when you buy a pack, you get, they look like this. Uh, they're about 100 millimeters long and about five millimeters wide. So they're really tiny. Um, and you can fold them into whatever shape you want. Now I don't really use them much as clips because I don't really need to clip two pieces together very often. Uh, but if you want to do that, you can actually, there's a, a on the New Concepts website. And you can find these photos where various artists have uh, shown how to make these uh, clips in any way that you, that you need to accommodate your soldering needs. I just use them really, really simply. I take my ring mandrel, I have a couple like this, and I just bend the clip around the ring mandrel, and I anneal it first so it's easier to, to bend. And then I just take some pliers and I squeeze the ends like this. So when I take it off, they look like this. Okay, and I use these mostly to prop things up. So these have been well loved and well used. And then, you know, occasionally I'll pickle them to get all the flux off because they get a little yucky after a while. But let me just show you, like if I have a piece of silver, I'm working on my, my bench here. And I want to, uh, you know, get some heat under this piece. Let's say I'm soldering, you know, oh, I don't know, maybe a cuff. And I need to get some heat under it. So I can stack these guys and get some heat underneath my piece this way. I can even make bridges out of them. I could do one on each end, you know, whatever I wanna do. Um, I can use them in my annealing pan. And I can use them to keep something from falling over. Let's say I wanted to set this up, and this is just a crazy example, not that I would ever solder or anything this way, but I could use these little rings on the sides to elevate and hold my piece if I had to solder. Let's say I wanted to do some balls on top of this little ledge or whatever. So I've got my little uh, clamps over the edges. And there's just a million different ways that you can use these clips. You, you don't have to uh, do them the way I'm doing them. Like I said, go on the newconcepts.com website. And if you look for titanium clips or if you go on to Ganoskin, there's pictures and there's artists that have done this before and they've spent a lot of time uh, shaping theirs so and making some pretty pretty nice pieces out of them. They're great though I think every artist should have these in their studio. They just make uh, They're so much better than steel You know, I, I often tell my students to throw their tripods out the window because they're gonna get such a bad heat sink that you know with the amount of soldering that I do in my work, you know, really, you know, you've got a piece that's got like this it's got just like tons of detail and uh, you're going to be heating it a long time and you really don't want to, to risk melting it. But um, anyway, I'm going to take you now over to, if you happen to have a grinder, uh, I'm going to take you over to my grinder and show you a really easy way to to form one of these rather than, I'm not, like I said, I'm not the kind of person that wants to spend a, a bunch of time shaping these. One thing I did do is I made some little uh, file marks so that when I can bend this and when I bend it, it's going to be a little bit easier just like if you were making a box or something you'd make some file marks or you can use your jeweler saw and go about halfway through I'm not sure if you can see um, anyway 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grind the tips down on my on my uh, belt sander, okay? And the, it doesn't get hot, which is really cool. So you can actually hold on to this with your hand while you're grinding it. So if you have one of the Harbor Freight mini grinders, these work really well too. Um, you just have a grinder on one end. They're 19 bucks at Harbor Freight. I happen to have a, a really big one from Grizzly. So I'm going to take you over there and, and we're just going to grind this one down and I'll bend it and show you how I did that. So you want to wear a face mask if you're going to be on a grinder so that nothing flies up and hits you in the face. I have the grinder volume turned down here so I can just tell you what I'm doing. I'm simply using my hands. I don't need any uh, glove or anything because the end of the titanium piece does not get hot, though the tip that's touching the sand belt will get hot. So I don't want to touch that. I'm just grinding both sides here and it's really, really fast. It doesn't take long. And uh, now that I've got the two tips uh, the two sides grounded down into a nice little dagger shape. I'm just going to take a uh, sanding blocker. You can also just use a piece of sandpaper and just, you know, wipe off any shards that might be on there and make sure it's nice and smooth so you don't. I need to yourself. anneal it before I bend it. So I'm going to go over there and do that now. You don't want to anneal it before you sharpen it, but anneal it before you bend it. All right, so we've annealed it, we've quenched it. We simply need to make two bends on those silver lines that we sawed into the piece. Layers. This is not hard to bend because, you know, I've annealed it and stuff, so it's good. Actually, this side, the pointed side, and set it there, and then I'm just going to push this side down. I'm going to hold this with my pliers. You guys can see what I'm doing here. So what I'm trying to do, I'm pushing it over a little bit because what I want to do is have it come all the way in. Back out just a little bit so you guys can make sure you see everything that I'm doing here. Okay, so this is what I've got so far. It's pointed on the top and it's flat on the bottom. Now, if I want to try to make something like this picture here, all I need to do is bend that top part down. And so I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And I think what I'll do is I'll get a round tool. I'm just going to bend the tip down with my bail making pliers. They'll work really well for this. Okay, so you can see this little clip that I just made. So if I wanted to hold something, you know, this bends up and I could stick something in there. I could easily stick a piece of metal in there. And if I needed to clip something onto it to hold it in place while I was soldering, I could easily do that. So that's a really easy one. This one's a great one to make. There's other ones. All right, here's another one where I just put it on my little Harbor Freight grinder and I just made like a little curve angle there, a little curve angle there, filed a couple of notches there for bending. And we just have to quench it and anneal it and then make two bends just like we did the last time. And here's my other bend. So now I've got something that looks like this. I'm going to bring those two ends in together. This is pretty fancy. I don't know if I'd ever really need one this fancy, but I just wanted to show you guys how easy they are, they are to make. So they really are pretty simple. Now I'm just going to take these over to my vise and squeeze these two ends together nice and tight so that they, they pinch. All right. Now, just like when you make a jump ring and you want to take two ends with a couple of pair of pliers and kind of when I'm pulling them and twisting them to try to get them to meet, because you want them to kind of clamp a little bit together. Until they kind of click together. OK, 
Okay, my ends aren't pretty much in there. So I've kind of made, made this little clamp. But I think I'd like to grind them and make them a little nicer. So I'm just going to use my little Harbor Freight grinder. But I'm going to put some uh, my face shield on here. It's pink. <laughs> and I'll just show you what I'm doing here. I'm just going to take this little guy and... So I'm going on the corner here. So that I can get in the same size. Okay, for so what I'm using the, these for, they're good. I'm just going to quench these because the tips will be hot. The end I'm touching won't be, which even just proves more what a great, uh, great tool these are. So, you know. Okay, so here's what we have, you know, in just a little under five minutes. Uh, I managed to make, you know, two clips and they were very simple to make and they'll be very handy in uh, helping me to hold my pieces together where I don't get a heat sink. So, so here are the two clips that we just made. So, you know, you can make them however you like. Whatever works for you and however you feel uh, is going to be the best. Unlike steel, they won't, like, stretch out on you and fall apart. You can always, you know, keep these going. They will stretch a little bit, but you can put them right back together. They're easy to bend. Some of the other ways that, you know, we prop things up, uh, a lot of people recommended binding wire, and I've used it a little bit, but, you know, after, like, two solderings, it's a mess, and it all starts to fall apart and your piece will start sticking to it and this stuff just break see this is just breaking it's brittle and it'll break so you're gonna have to constantly make little nests so get rid of that idea and start using these because they're great they're great for propping your piece up you can stack them you can stack them you can do whatever you want anyway i really like them so i hope you do too so there's a little tip for you also i just want to um say that i recently upgraded because i couldn't resist to the birdcage frame titanium saw with the adjustable cam lever. Um, this is a really cool saw. Do you need it? No, you probably don't. It's not for the kind of people who, you know, just want to get a nice saw and saw some nice stuff. This is for tool hoarders. <laughs> this is for people who really like to have the really nice tools. And um, this saw has a swiveling blade. Lever. So as you are you know, coming into a piece and you need to turn the other way and maybe you don't have enough room, maybe it's a really big piece. This is a five inch one uh, fret, so you don't have to really worry as a jeweler unless you're working on something huge, uh, cutting out some intricate piece where you have to do a sharp turn and you can't, you know, you're whacking yourself in the face and you can't get around it or you're hitting your metal. Um, you can actually turn these simply by just pushing and it will change the direction of your blade. But I find for me, it's very awkward to saw if my blade isn't pointing the direction of the back. So I haven't quite got the hang of it yet, but I'm sure there will be a day and time where I will use these adjustable cam levers with the swivel blade. I just, now is not the time. One more thing I should tell you about this saw is that uh, the tension is crazy on this one. It's so tight and so uh, wonderful. It's just like, dang, man, it's just, that blade is gonna last. I, I, you know, you can go a long time on a blade without breaking it, as long as you're not pushing. But yeah, it really keeps the tension. It's like mad crazy good. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a very expensive saw, and it's it's just more for somebody who my my little red new new concept saw is my baby. I love her. This one's just super fun, and um, it's like having you know you have yourself a really nice car that gets you to work every day that you love that's dependable and then you have your you know your porsche <laughs> you don't drive it much but when you do you really have a good time that's what this is so anyway just thought i'd give a give a thumbs up on this new saw and knew newconcepts.com chipping out and if you're not already subscribed to my website, please do www.mrkalevillaria.com.
online classes going on all the time. And I hope you can join me in the next